Breaking news into CNN, a federal judge has just set the trial date for former President Donald Trump on charges that he tried to overturn the 2020 presidential election. March 4th, 2024. CNN's Evan Perez is outside the federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. He just sprinted out of the courtroom. Evan, take us there. How did this unfold? Well, Boris, this was uh, uh, quite a he heated hearing from the, the part of the, the former president's lawyers uh, who were pushing uh, for a much later court uh, trial date. Uh, they said that the former president uh, is not going to be able to get a fair trial if he is uh, forced to go uh, to trial in the next few months. Uh, in part, they say they're buried under millions and millions of pages uh, of discovery from the prosecution, things that they say they have to go through. They, they noted that uh, at least the lawyers don't even have their final security clearances yet uh, to be able to review some of the classified information that they expect that they're going to be able to get. The judge pushed back very, very strongly. She said that the, the, the public has a, uh, a, an interest or has a right in a prompt and an efficient resolution of this of this matter. Uh, she set March 4th uh, for the trial to get started. Now that's uh, right before, I believe, right before uh, the, the Iowa caucuses, um, or, or I'm sorry, right before the, the Super Tuesday. Uh, so that it obviously it brings up the, the political question, right, for the former president, because you're looking at uh, a period where, uh, according to the prosecution, it's gonna be four or five weeks of trial where he might have to spend his weekdays sitting here at the federal court while he goes on trial, in this case, the judge, uh, Judge Tanya Chutkin, pushed back strongly when the former president's lawyers said that they just don't have the time to prepare. She said, uh, you know, I've seen defendants who've had uh, maybe re not, the, not the resources to have their lawyers prepare for trial. She noted this is not the case. Uh, John Lauro, one of uh, the former president's attorneys, uh, really made a, a strong push. Again, an impassioned plea for a much later date. He said what the prosecution was trying to get was a show trial, uh, not a, a speedy trial. So you see uh, there uh, from uh, the proceedings here today uh, that this judge, you know, Judge Chutkin, she uh, was not very patient with the idea of waiting till 2026. I should note, uh, she said that she had a conversation with a judge in New York where the former president is also facing a criminal trial uh, related to the hush money payments there in, uh, in New York. Uh, she said she talked to the judge there because she realized that it might overlap with that case there. Uh, nonetheless, she said uh, that she was setting this date and obviously there's a lot of uh, room between now and the seven months from now uh, where the two sides are going to fight this out and try to push that date even further, uh, at least on the part of the former president, Boris. A major decision by Judge Chutkin, March 4th, 2024. As you noted, Evan, one day before Super Tuesday on March 5th, one of the biggest days on the primary calendar. Evan Perez, thanks so much for breaking that news to us. We're joined now by Democratic strategist and former executive director for the New York State Democratic Party, Basil Smeichel, and Republican strategist and former RNC communications director, Doug High. Doug, I want to start with you because... Donald Trump has a lot of momentum and he's maintained momentum yep. as we've seen all of these legal processes play out. I have to imagine that with a trial start date of March 4th, he's going to use that going into March 5th. Well, I think actually by March 5th, we'll know who the nominee is. Uh, ultimately, I think this this primary season comes down to the Iowa caucuses. Iowa typically, and I've worked in Iowa uh, running comms for the 2012 caucus, Iowa typically is what winnows the field out. You lose in Iowa, you come in fourth place, fifth place, or, or worse, you drop out. But if Donald Trump wins Iowa, it's very clear then that he's going to have the momentum going into New Hampshire, where he's also leading in the polls. And a Donald Trump who wins Iowa and New Hampshire is not going to be beaten in the Republican primary. So, Basil, let's say that that continues, seeing the momentum that Trump still clearly has. I mean, is he the person that Biden and the Democrats want to uh, face again in 2024? And I want to just show you this Quinne Quinnipiac University poll, which showed a hypothetical 2024 matchup. Biden and Trump pretty much neck and neck. 
Well, uh, Biden, Trump 2.0, I'm, I'm not scared of that. I don't think the Democrats are scared of that. Um, frankly, if you think about and look at all of those issues that are still top of mind for voters, particularly reproductive rights, um, I think those are mobilizing issues. Uh, you know, he's done well on the economy. He doesn't get the credit that he should, and I get that. Um, but he's been great on the economy uh, in terms of playing defense, if you will, on those, uh, on those reproductive rights issues that are now in the states. I think Democrats see that as a winning issue and frankly when you look at the ways in which independents and disaffected republicans came out for democrats in 2022 i still think that's a winning coalition in 2024 but let's say the economy remains the, the primary issue what would it take for him to get credit for the economy because you're right he doesn't he doesn't get credit at least with with americans on polling I think continuing to still talk about it, I, I don't think he should be speaking a lot about, you know, what's happening with Donald Trump, maybe minimally. He's the best surrogate for his own record on the economy. Continue to do that. Those are, you know, for, for Democrats, a lot of what we're discussing is built in. For independents and Republicans that want to vote for Democrats, continue to talk about those economic issues. I think you just keep hammering it away. They've got some uh, really great media buys, particularly in the uh, in, in swing states with uh, voters of color. That all helps. The White House has not gone directly after President, former President Trump for his legal woes, and neither have a lot of Republicans, Doug. A lot of those folks on the debate stage last week raised their hands saying they would support Donald Trump even if he was convicted. Does that change as we get closer to the primaries? Well, I would hope it would, but it, it probably doesn't. Everything that we've seen thus far suggests that it wouldn't. And it's not just that they're not criticizing or going after or attacking Donald Trump in a way that they would any other candidate for any other race. The reality is when Donald Trump gets indicted, not only does it sort of reinforce his core message that the system's rigged and there's two tiers of justice and, and all of that, but his own opponents reinforce that language. If you're running against Donald Trump, but you back him up, you're strengthening him. You're not, you're not weakening him. You're not helping your case to become president. But I would say, I know that Democrats look at this race and think, well, we'll, we'll probably do pretty well against Donald Trump. But there's a real reality here of being careful what you wish for. That's exactly what Democrats thought in 2016. They thought there was no way that Donald Trump could beat Hillary Clinton, and he did, and we saw what, what the results were from that. I'd tell Democrats, be really careful of what you wish for on this. Your retort. No, that's, I, was, no, that's absolutely, I mean, he's right. Uh, <laughs> it, there's, it's a, there's a good chance that Donald Trump can win. And so for Democrats, you can't take, you can't be complacent at all. I think Hakeem Jeffries, and interestingly enough, I also think Nancy Pelosi, they're in a great position to actually help make the Democrats' case down ballot. If you think about reproductive rights, for example, in many ways, the Republicans are responding in the ways they did with the Affordable Care Act. They got power, they got what they wanted, and didn't have a solution at the other end. I think, in, and you saw that play out on the GOP debate stage. So what that gives is an opportunity for Democrats to hit every Republican on the most draconian uh, policies that are being put forth in states all the way down ballot. We do that, we stick to the script, then I think we have an opportunity to get more seats back, particularly in New York and California, and, um, and, and I think gives uh, President Biden a boost. Doug, as we learn more about these trial dates and their set, Ambassador Bolton made the point earlier when speaking to Boris that a conviction might change minds in a way that investigations and indictments haven't. Do you see it that way? Mm -hmm. Potentially so. Look, all those candidates who raised their hand and said they'd support Donald Trump if he were convicted, that's being convicted in theory, not convicted in, in practice. So certainly you could see some people peel away from that. And you could certainly uh, uh, bet that those, Repu those voters, independent voters, soft Republicans who voted for Donald Trump in 2016 but then went to Joe Biden in 2020, indictment and certainly conviction don't want to go in that in that direction it also highlights uh, or what, what, a, what a lot of the conversation is going to be basil's telling us very specifically what democrats want to be talking about donald trump's personal and legal problems and and the issue of abortion notice they're not talking about the economy it's still very rocky ground for joe biden right now looks to continue for a long time this is not the terra firma that they want to be on Basil, quickly to you, put you on the spot. You said you were comfortable with a Donald Trump, Joe Biden rematch. Who do the Democrats not want to face? 
Wow, that's a great question. I can't say that they don't want to face anyone. What I would say is that with anyone on the ballot, and that includes Donald Trump, there's a chance that Democrats don't win. We saw that turnout in very key areas with key constituencies was lower than we wanted it to be in 2024. If those voters don't come out, if we can't make that case in 2024, it's going to be a problem. It doesn't matter who's on the ballot against him. So it'll be an interesting matchup, regardless of who it is. Basil, Smichael, Doug High, thank you both. We appreciate it.